Hey guys, Electro Ninja here, and welcome back to Electro Ninja's Lab. So like I said before, this is the second video of today, and I'm going to continue talking about Gamer 2.0, but in this video, I am more specifically talking about events that occurred after game, uh, Gamer 2.0. Specifically, this tweet. Thomas Ostruck tweeted out, Who'd want this game? And of course, he tweeted out, <laughs> he tagged like a crap ton of different people. From Sega, Nintendo, EA, Koei, Bandai, Arc, Ubisoft, Xbox, Capcom, ATV. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I thought he he also tweeted out Sony, but I guess he didn't, sadly. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, he tweeted it out saying, do you want this game? Now, a few things to know is what exactly would this game be? Now, obviously, we all know that everyone wants it. I mean, come on. The, uh, the reaction to his tweet is kind of obvious that people want it. So let's take a look at the picture. So, first off, you'll notice that we have a whole bunch of the different characters. I don't know why it's still showing the tweet. But you'll also notice that there are a few spots that are open. As well as, obviously, these extra areas. Now, I'm going to say right now that I do not believe that... Um, through the game, you have to select all of, the, you have to play through and gather all of these guys. That might be part of the story, where you have to play through as every character in order to gather up all of the miraculous, or uh, the miraculous and the, uh, and the akumatized items. However, in the actual game, I do not believe that they would actually do this. Instead, I believe that they will replace these with anyone else that has been akumatized. So, yeah. Um, you will notice that there are a few specific people that are not seen on here. Specifically, people who have duplicate versions. So, there is no... Um, Queen Wasp. There's uh, there's none of the heroes except for obviously Ladybug and Cat Noir that we saw, and there's also no Chameleon. There's a I don't believe that there were any others that were really important to note, but those specific ones they're not there. So the question then is, what exactly will you be able to do? Um, now obviously. Balancing this whole thing would be a challenge, because certain characters have a lot of advantages over others. Like, oh yeah, this uh, you can't uh, if you want to use um, frickin' puppeteer, then oh you used uh, and you're facing off against anyone that she has a doll of, then oops now you're screwed now you have to deal with that. Um, so, yeah. Um, honestly, I think that what they're going to do is, if they do this, they will allow you to play as almost every hero and villain, um, uh, filling up the entire, uh, triangle, and you'll be able to play as all of them. However, you will not be able to play as all of them right away. Perhaps you'll be able to play as everyone that was in Season 1 right away, but then you have to do the story in order to unlock other characters. Um, and as you play through all uh, with all these characters, you also will be getting their miraculous slash akumatized item. Basically whatever gives them their power. Um, after you have obtained their specific item, it'll go to... Um, some other location where you can create a custom character, or you'll be able to go up into the top and select uh, the question mark, which will allow you to play as one char 
uh, it'll give you the choice of one character that you want to be your main, and then you get the four other items, like how we saw in the previous thing. So, yeah. And, yeah, you'll be able to basically use all of the different heroes and villains without actually being affected. Um, now, another thing is that I do not believe that you will only have one area of combat. Uh, I think that there will be, obviously, the base area, which is the Gamer 2.0 setup, but then you'll also be able to fight in uh, on the Eiffel Tower, uh, the uh, lake, or whatever it's called. I don't remember what that area is called. You'll be able to battle in the park, You'll um, the school, all those different places. And it will be kind of cool. I don't, maybe some of these areas you won't be able to ring out. Like, maybe you won't be able to ring out while you're in the, um, uh, while you're on the Eiffel Tower, or you're in the um, the football field, or something like that, while other areas you would be able to bring out. Um, and obviously, certain characters would have more or less of an advantage, uh, more or less of their powers, depending on what you're who you're facing off against. If you've got two people that are uh, giants, then uh, if you've got two characters that are giants that you've chosen, then both of them will be giants and you'll be able to do that. Um, I don't think that, oh, yeah, you hit um, a stone heart. Oh, now he's bigger. Now he can capture you easier. Or, oh, he can, uh, oh, this character can lock you up. Now you're screwed. Nope, I don't think that they're going to do that. I think that they will be doing stuff with each character is a bit more balanced and stuff like that. Um, obviously, we still need a little bit more than just balancing <laughs> of all these powers. But, yeah, we'll see what happens. Obviously, I don't think that every character necessarily has to be playable. Um, perhaps... Uh, certain characters will not be playable, such as, um, maybe, yeah, uh, frickin', uh, invisible, when, she, when Sabrina becomes invisible. Uh, she will not, I don't think that she would be playable because of the fact that she's kind of useless in any combat, and, yeah, she's... There's a lot. There's a few other characters that are kind of useless in combat, but they manage to do kind of good in this. Um, and also, anything that would uh, make you have to, so basically, it immobilizes you. So, like, oh, you got turned into, uh, oh, you got turned into Reflecta. So that would basically, you can still move around. Um, maybe you, if you've never played as Reflecta before, then you, uh, have a bit of difficulty moving around, but, um, you, uh, but you aren't able to use your ability, but then you're able to, um, so it would basically be you running around until the timer goes down, then you're back to your normal self, and then you can fight using your special ability. That would be what I would expect, stuff like that. And, like, um, and maybe you'll get cap if you get captured by the bubbler's bubble ability, then you'll be trapped in the bubble for a little bit. It, he might be able to knock you into an area or something like that. Um, maybe if you jump over, uh, what, what might be a good thing is, like, if you, uh, if you were in the air when he did that, if you can't break out in time, maybe uh, suddenly if you go too far off the stage, then you'll be destroyed, kind of like how uh, 
it works in uh, 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 Super Smash Bros. But as for the combat style of what fight, what type of fighter I would like to see, I don't want it to be a 2D fighter like uh, most fighters are nowadays. I want it to be similar to a lot of the anime fighters. So maybe we'll get something like what we have in My Hero Academia 1's Justice. That would be actually a lot of fun to see. Um, something like that. But... Let me know what you guys want to see for the actual fighter, and also let me know if you guys want to see the actual the game be like this, or if you want it to be a another, uh, or if you want to have it be something like Spider-Man PS4. I personally would like the actual game to be a Spider-Man PS4 thing rather than a fighter, but I know that a fighter is more likely at this point in time. But anyways, guys, uh, like I said, let me know what your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you can see all of my future videos. But anyways, guys, I have been Electro Ninja, and I will see you guys next time. But on!